Okay, so I'm going to be going over some GCSE maths vector questions that involve equating coefficients. I think this is one of the harder topics in GCSE maths, but once you get your head around it, it's actually pretty straightforward. So in our first example, they give us a quadrilateral, and they give us these three vectors, which are labeled on the diagram. And they ask us, and they ask us to express f to e in terms of a and or b. So even though they haven't given us the vector f to e, we can express f to e by going from f to c to c to d to d to e. And we know the values of all these vectors in terms of a and b. So we can just substitute these values in and we're left with f to e equaling to 2a. And notice how in our equation we start with f and we end at e. So the part, uh, so the answer to part A is just two A. But part B is where it gets slightly trickier. They tell us that M is the midpoint of D E, and X is the point on F M such that F to X, to X to M, is in the ratio n to one. And they also tell us that C X E is a straight line, which will be useful later on. And we need to work out the value of n. So we need to work out what f to x is. Um, and f to x lies on f to m, so we might as well f uh, start with finding the vector f to m. And we can find f to m by going from f to c, to c to d, to d to m. And we know what d to m is, because m is the midpoint, which means it splits d to e in half. So d to m, I mean, yeah, so d to m is just a half b which means that f to m is 2a minus a half b. And now, even though we can't work out what f to x is right now, we can say that f to x is just k multiplied by f to m, where k is just a scalar quantity. And what that means is that k is multiplying f to m in order to shrink f to m down to f to x. It's kind of like how if we have a number, say for example 5, and we multiply it by a scalar quantity, say 0 0.2, we're scaling this number down into the number 1. And that's what we're doing to this vector. We're scaling f to m down into the vector f to x by multiplying it by a scalar quantity k. So now we have a way of expressing f to x which is just 2ka minus a half kb. But we don't really know what the value of k is, so what we need to do is find another way of expressing f to x in terms of a different scalar quantity. Uh, and what we can actually say is that f to x is f to c plus c to x. And even though we don't know what c to x is, we can work out what c to e is. And c to e is just a plus b and by applying the same logic we did to work out f to x we can say that c to x is just x which is another scalar quantity multiplied by c to e and we're shrinking it down to c to x notice how c to e is larger than c to x which means that the scalar quantity we are multiplying c to e by must be less than 1 because we're shrinking it down. This makes c to x equal to xa plus xb and we can say that f to x is f to c plus c to x which is just a minus b plus xa plus xb. And now we have two ways of representing f to x and what we can do is we can compare the coefficients of the a vectors and the coefficients of the b vectors. So if we compare the coefficient of the a vectors here, we can see that we have 1a plus xa. So the coefficients here are 1 and x, and that's equal to 2k. And if we compare the coefficients of the b vectors, we can say that we have minus 1b plus xb, and that's equal to minus a half kb. So x minus 1 is equal to minus a half k. And if we subtract 
our second equation from our first, we're left with 5 over 2k equaling to 2, and that makes k equal to 4 over 5. And k was what we were multiplying f to m by to shrink it down to f to x. So we can say that f to x is 4 over 5 of f to m, which makes x to m 1 over 5, which makes the ratio 4 to 1, leaving n equaling to 4. But why does this work? Why can't we compare the coefficients of vectors? Well, to understand why, we need to go back to the definition of a vector. And a vector just describes the movement of one point to another. A vector quantity has both direction and magnitude. The key point here is that a vector has a direction, which means that if we have a vector that travels two units to the right and three units up, this is completely different to another vector that travels four units to the right and two units up. These vectors move in different directions and when added together, they create a resultant vector that moves six units to the right and five up. And if we label this vector A and this vector B, then this resultant vector would be A plus B. Notice how the coefficients of A and the coefficients of B are both one because there is only one way to form this a plus b vector, which is through one of this a vector plus one of this b vector. We can link this to our scalar quantity equation, and in this example, it tells us that k multiplied by a plus x multiplied by b is equal to 2a plus b. And from our understanding of vectors, because vectors a and b are traveling in different directions, we can separate the a vectors and the b vectors because the only way to have a vector that travels twice in the a direction and once in the b direction is to have a, va a k value equaling to 2 and therefore, using the same logic, x is equal to 1. Here is another example for you to try. Try to work out the values of k and the value of x by comparing the coefficients of both of these vectors. So if we compare the coefficients of the a vectors, we're given that 3k is equal to 1 plus x, and the coefficients of the b vectors gives us that x is equal to k plus 2, and solving this simultaneous equation, we're given that k is equal to 3 over 2, and x is equal to 7 over 2. In this example, we're given a triangle, and they tell us that OPM and APN are straight lines, and we're also given that M is the midpoint of AB. We're also told the vectors A to O and O to B. They give us the ratio of O to P to P to M, and we're told to work out the ratio from O to N to N to B. So we need to work out either O to N or n to b because once we work out one of uh, one of those we can work out the other because we're given the full length of o to b so for this example i decided to work out the vector o to n and because we know the vector o to b we can just say that o to n is k multiplied by b and notice that o to n is smaller than o to b so k should be less than 1, because we're shrinking o to b down to a smaller vector. Now thinking back to how we solved the first problem, we need to find two ways of representing o to n. But currently we only have one way of representing o to n. But we can actually go from o to a, and then go from a to n, and that would equal uh, k lots of b. So we know o to a but we need to work out a to n. So what we can say is we can apply the same logic and say that a to n is just x multiplied by a to p, where x is another scalar quantity. And notice how a to n is actually longer than a to p, which means that x needs to be greater than zero because we're stretching a to p into a to n. And we can actually work out 
uh, the vector a to p. We can go from a to o, and then go from o to p. We know a to o is just minus a, and we can work out o to p. o to p is just 3 fifths of o to m, and o to m is going to be a plus a half of a b, which a b is just minus a plus b. So o to m is a plus a half minus a plus b, which is just equal to a half a plus a half b. And because o to p is equal to 3 fifths of o to m, that leaves o to p equaling to 3 tenths of a plus b. And now that we have o to p, we can work out a to p by saying that a to p is a to o plus o to p. And substituting our values in, we're given that a to p is equal to 3 tenths b minus 7 tenths a. And because a to n is equal to x multiplied by a to p, we can say that a to n is equal to 3 tenths x multiplied by b minus 7 over 10 x multiplied by a. Which means that o to n is going to be a plus a to n. So now we have two equations to represent o to n. And if we compare the coefficients of a, we're given that 1 minus 7 over 10x is equal to 0 because there's no a components here. And 3 over 10x is equal to k. Uh, there shouldn't be a b here, that's a mistake. So solving for x and k, we'll get, we can find out that x is equal to 10 over 7 and k is equal to 3 over 7. And so o to n is equal to 3 over 7b, which means that n to b is equal to 4 over 7, which means the ratio from o to n to n to b is just 3 to 4. And here's another question for you guys to try. Go ahead and try this question at home. But I'll be ending the video here. And hopefully you guys have learned something today.